good morning to speak the teachers and my dear friends. Today, the students of class 9B are here to talk about why is Sikkim called the Bazaar Rusty Hotspot. So, let's get into our journey to get to know our beautiful state, Sikkim, a little better. Agenda First topic is what is biodiversity, which is shown on slide number 3. Importance of biodiversity Slide number 4 why Sikkim is called Biodiversity Hotspot. Introduction. Slide number 5. Its subtopics. Flora and Fauna on slide number 6, 7 and 8. Another subtopic. Sikkim Ecoregion on slide number 9 and 10. Human Effect. Slide number 11. Conservation of Biodiversity Hotspot. Slide number 12. Creative Corner. Slide number 13. Conclusion. Slide number 40. What is biodiversity? Through 4 billion years of evolution, life on Earth has expanded to almost infinite diversity. Each species interacting with others and molding itself to its habitat until a global ecosystem developed. This diversity of life forms is commonly referred to as biodiversity. The word biodiversity is a contraction of two words, biological and diversity. Literally, it refers to the number, variety and all life forms on the Earth. These include millions of plants, animals and microorganisms, the genes they contain and the intricate ecosystem of which they are the part. Most commonly, biodiversity is a measure of the number of the species in an ecosystem. This is for what is biodiversity. Importance of biodiversity. Biodiversity is important to humans for reasons. Biodiversity is also considered by many to have intrinsic value. Many, that is, each species has a value and right to exist, whether or not it is known to have the value to humans. The biodiversity books by Commonwealth Scientific and the Industrial Research Organization describe five core value that humans place on biodiversity. Economic. Biodiversity provides humans with raw materials for consumption and production. Many livelihood, such as those of farmers, fishers, and tim workers, are dependent on biodiversity. Ecological life support. Biodiversity provides functioning ecosystems that supply oxygen, clean air and water, pollination of plants, pest control, wastewater treatment, and many ecosystem services. Recreation. Many recreational pursuits rely on our unique biodiversity, such as bird watching, hiking, camping and fishing. Our tourism industry also depends on biodiversity. Cultural. The Australian culture is closely connected to biodiversity through the expression of identity, through spiritually and through atheistic appreciation. Indigenous Australians have strong connections and obligation to biodiversity arising from the spiritual beliefs about animals and plants. Scientific Biodiversity represents a wealth of systematic ecological data that help us to understand the natural world and its origin. Sikkim is the second smallest state in India. Today, due to human-induced threats and stresses on its unique biodiversity, Sikkim has become a biodiversity hotspot with as many as 5,500 plant species only found within the 7,096 km square geographical area. It has a human population of approximately 6,19,000 and is situated within the Eastern Himalayan biodiversity hotspot and is rich in alpine flora and fauna diversity. 83% of Sikkim's land area is covered with forests distributed in five ecoregions. First tropical, second subtropical, third temperate, fourth alpine forest and scrub, and finally fifth trans Himalayan ecoregions. It also has undocumented mountain peaks, glaciers, rivers, streams, high altitude lakes, and geothermal springs which are yet to be explored. Sikkim, with its high biodiversity, is situated in a fragile ecosystem of tropical mountains in eastern Himalaya. It is currently under threat of irreparable damage as a result of several factors, including the melting of glaciers due to global warming, floods, landslides, invasive hydrothermal projects, road construction, deforestation, and the destruction of trees for fuel and 
domestic purposes, growth and tourism, and much more. All these issues must be properly addressed in order to protect and conserve the unique biodiversity of the Sikkim Himalaya. Now, I will tell you about flora and fauna. Here comes the flora. The term flora in Latin means goddess of the flower. Flora is a collective term for a group of plant life found in a particular region. The whole plant kingdom is represented by this name. Flora is classified and differentiated based on many factors. The best one among them is the area in which they grow or are found. Some grow in desert regions or in water. Some are found in hilly areas while some are endemic to a specific geographic location. According to the place at which they grow, they have adaptations also. For example, cactus plants are naturally seen in deserts. They have adaptations like modified leaves or prickles to preserve water and protect themselves from predators. Now comes the fauna. Fauna represents the animal life indigenous to a region. There are many explanations regarding the origin of the word. As per Roman mythology, fauna or faunus is the name of the goddess of fertility. Another source is faunus, which means forest spirits. Animal kingdom comprises of a variety of animal life forms. Hence, the classification of fauna is much more complex than the floral division. The earth is beautiful because of all these life forms. Other life forms depend on them for various resources and exploit them. Conservation of flora and fauna is thus necessary for future survival. Now I will tell you about flora in second. So first flora name is Noble Dendrobium. Dendrobium noble, commonly known as the Noble Dendrobium, is a member of the family orchid. It has become a popular cultivated decorative house plant because it produces colorful blooms in winter and spring at a time when little else is in flower. It is also one of the 50 fundamental herbs used in traditional Chinese medicine. Dendrobium noble is one of the most widespread ornamental members of the orchid family. It blooms are variegated in color, shading from white through pink and purple and the many different cultivated varieties produced different size and colored blooms. Second flora is purple foxglove. This plant forms a tight rosette of simple coarse leaves with prominent veins for a nearby quilted look in its first ear. The ovate to lanceolate leaves with barely noticeable rounded teeth on the margins grow on a winged petiole formed by the lower veins. The alternate leaves up to a foot long are covered with grey-white hairs that impact a downy texture on the upper surface and are woolly or hair below. The clump remains low and close to the ground. Next flora is purple hydrangeas. Purple hydrangeas bring stunning beauty to part-shaped settings. They are the type of flowering shrub that you won't regret including in your landscape. Most purple hydrangea varieties fall into the French or big leaf group. Hydrangea macrophylla. This group divides the plant into two categories based on flower form. Mophid types have spherical flower heads, while lace caps open flattened blooms with tiny central flowers ringed with a row of traditional looking hydrangea blossoms. In both types of blooms, you can find purple hydrangea varieties. Now I will tell you about fauna in Sikkim. So first fauna is red panda. The red panda has long soft reddish brown fur on the upper parts, blackish fur on the lower parts and a light face with tear markings and white badges similar to those of a raccoon but each individual can have distinctive markings. Its skull is roundish with medium sized upright ears. Its nose is black and its eyes are blackish. Its teeth are robust. Its long bushy tail with six alternating transverse ochre rings provide balance and excellent camouflage in a habitat with moss and lichen covered trees. The legs are black and short with thick fur on the soles of the paws. Second fauna is snow leopard. The snow leopard has a thick coat of fur which is colored a smoky gray. 
This is patterned with black circles known as rosettes. On the underside of this animal is a yellowy, tan, smoky gray or white coloration. The snow leopard has gray or green eyes. Snow leopards have a thick tail covered with fur, which they use as a blanket when they are sleeping. To balance while climbing down steep rock faces, the tail is essential. Their feet are wide and covered in fur, allowing them to act like a natural snowshoe. Next fauna is Dhole. The Dhole is most commonly red with a pale underside and white feet. The tip of their tail is black. In some areas, Dholes have ad adapted to their habitat becoming a sandy beach or a charcoal grey. Dholes are carnivorous. They feed on deer, mice, birds, lizards, frogs, wild pigs and goats, buffalo, gore, banting, sheep and reindeer. They live in dense forests thick scrub, open grasslands, rainforest, alpine zones, and steppe regions. The dhole is also known as the Asiatic wild dog, whistling dog, mountain wolf, Indian wild dog, and the red dog. Let's talk about Chikkim ecoregion. First, it's a tropical ecoregion. It expands generally from the lower region of the Houghton Himalayas to a height of around 1,200 meters. It contains steep sided valleys and canyons with all around depleted flanking inclines. Different types of orchids climbers like the vigorous eride Refidophara, wild banana, Musa sikkimensis, M. balbiciana, Himalayan screwpine, Pandanus, Nepalsis, Date palm, Phoenix, Sylvestris, and the uncommon P. rupicola, the main living fossil tree of Sikkim, Cycus pectinata. Weeds and monster bamboos are normal for the area. In the area of Rangit Valley, Sal Shoria Robusta shows a one of a kind relationship with the Cheer Pine Pinus Roxburghi. In patches of ensured wood, it is conceivable to see the frail cell being gradually commanded by the pine. These patches are generally poor in winged animals' life. Second is the subtropical ecoregion. It reaches out from around 1,800 meter to 3,000. The precipitation in this zone is extremely weighty and conditions stay moist consistently. The upper story principally comprises of the tree like Kistanopsis, Hystric, Maculus, Rhododendron, Simplocos, Sipicata, Thyfolia, Michelia, Excelsa, Quercus, Lemilosa, Lineata, Pachy, Phyla, Engelhardia, Spipicata, Legioceptrum, Canum. In the understory are Urea japonica, Rhododendron arboreum, and Viburanum. In the center story, Simplicos thyfolia is the fundamental species, and Lithia, furthermore, Buclandia populnia are different partners. Thick, tall, evergreen woodlands with oak and rhododendrons prevail. The undergrowth comprises of the bamboo, arundiara, mulling, assortment of plant, epiphytic, green trees and orchids. Third is the temperate ecoregion. It stretches out from 3000 meter to 4000 meter with blended coniferous timberlands of hemlock, spruce, fine, fir and junipers and with shrubby undergrowth of rhododendrons and arundinaria just as the inoxorably uncommon climbers Aristolochia griffiti and insectivorous pies Drosera peltata. Fourth is the alpine forest and scrubs. It reaches out up to 4,500 with little abnormal trees and spreading bushes blended with fir and pine. The tender timberland is basically of birch, bitula and rhododendron with elevated spices like different types of brilliant primulas and potentillas. Prevailing wild fauna incorporate the endangered alpine musk, deer, moscus, chrysogaster, near threatened Himalaya, Tahar hemitragus, Chimlahicus, blue sheep or Bharal Seodois, Nayor, blood pheasant, Itagenes, Cruentus and Ibisbil, Ibodorphinaca, Struterci, stream frameworks, herbores, a few presented brown trout, salmo, truta, faria. Fifth and the last is the Trans Himalayan ecoregion. It stretches out from 4,500 meter to more than 5,500 meter. 
with trademark cold desert vegetation only limited towards the north of Sikkim. This eco region has not yet been remembered for the ensure territory system of the trade and is maybe the most comprised. In the recent time, we have seen many reasons that why Sikkim is known as the biodiversity hotspot. Now let's see what are the human effects on this biodiversity. Human effects biodiversity by many ways like destruction, degradation and fragmentation of habitats, reduction of individual survival and reproductive rates through exploitation, pollution and introduction of aligned species. The further information is given here. Now let's take a look on how we can conserve the biodiversity and make it a safe place. There are many ways in which we can conserve our biodiversity such as all the varieties of food, timber, plants, livestock, microbes and agriculture animals should be conserved. The reserves and protected areas should be developed carefully. Public awareness should be created regarding biodiversity, conservation and its importance. Deforestation should be strictly prohibited. The reserves and protected areas should be developed carefully. Poaching and hunting of wild animals should be prevented. Environmental laws should be followed strictly. These are only some ways in which we can conserve the biodiversity but there are numerous other ways in which we can help the government to conserve our biodiversity. Conclusion. Biodiversity is a concept that has no general definition. Usually it is used in the context that stresses the need for attention on a living environment and sustainable use of natural resources. Biodiversity can be divided in different types such as habitat, species and genetic diversity. The integrated approach uses in the coastal zone management is an adequate method in dealing with the matter of biodiversity.